wormhole to heaven. A DX Trip report by Colby M. Posted to Earwood.org September 22nd, 2023. I'd experimented with robo-tripping a couple of times before, and really wanted a more intense trip. I was at a rough point in my life, and experimenting was an escape for me. I bought two 20-count bottles of extended-release Robotussin, and later that night in my basement, I asked God, or the universe, Please, let this make me a better person. I don't remember why I said that, but I knew I needed to for some reason. After pouring both bottles out on my mattress, I started eating them one at a time. Eventually, I started swallowing three or four at a time to speed up the process, and after finally finishing all 40 pills, I sat and waited. I listened to music for a bit, then played some computer games. My body movements felt heavy and slow. I enjoyed that feeling for an hour or so, and then it really started to kick in. I lay down on my bed, and felt my heart slow down. I closed my eyes, and the world dropped away. I floated upwards and stared down at my body for a moment, then was rocketed through space-time. I saw the surfaces of many unknown planets, or perhaps other dimensions rushing past. The rushing stopped when I was in a grassy field with a pink-tinged sky. I was next to a still pond of clear water. I felt so incredibly loved at that moment. Two figures descended from the sky and each took one of my arms. They took me upward through the sky to a golden city on the clouds. There were many spheres with their own large grassy spaces and the figures took me into one of them. In that sphere was my brother's best friend who had died three years earlier. There was also a woman there with him, and they were both naked and glowing. It was a beautiful sight. He looked at me and said, You can't stay long, can you? I knew I couldn't, so I said no. After this, the spheres and cloudy city faded away, and I found myself in a pink-tinged field. In the field, there was a handsome man in a suit and tie. He told me to alternate doing mushrooms and LSD once every three months. This scene lasted for what seemed like a longish time. Next, everything faded to black, and there was no longer an eye to observe anything. After this, I saw two pyramids, one upside down in the shape of a diamond. Leading up to the top were the names of all the different world religions, including atheism. At the top was just the word Christ, and leading downward were other paths, one of which was hedonism. Then the words faded. The top pyramid turned bright blue, and the upside down pyramid turned black. The pyramids then separated, and there was a chain holding them together. Suddenly, something slashed the chain and the black pyramid fell away as the bright blue one rose upward. I then woke up face down on the floor, not at all where I'd fallen asleep. I felt so odd. Once the sun came up, I went up to my room. I sat outside my window on the roof and watched the sun rise. I closed my eyes and had a vivid vision of blood dripping down from a cross and pooling into a river. I felt myself lying in that river, and the feeling of pure love washed over me, broke my heart, to which I cried for the first time in years. It's at this point my life gets a bit hazy. My mum realised how much I'd taken when she saw the bottles in the trash. She proceeded to take me to the ER. I had another out-of-body experience in the hospital, and I vividly remember the sensation of my eyes rolling back as I travelled out of this reality again. I found my way back to my body, and woke up to the doctor being very angry at me. He told me there was no reason that I should still be alive. Maybe I had died for a few moments back there. My mum took me home once I stabilised, but the psychosis remained. I was convinced I was possessed by an angel of sorts. Long story short, I wound up at the ER again. They gave me a massive dose of Ativan, and took me to a psychiatric hospital via ambulance. It took a week and a half of being medicated with antipsychotics for the psychosis to fully end. And I have had long-lasting negative effects from all this, and will definitely not be attempting this again. The Inner Mind A DXM trip report by Nervewing Hosted at Irwood.org, August 16th, 2018 T plus zero hours. Begin drinking cough syrup. Try mixing it, chasing it with ginger ale. It's easiest to drink it if I just chase it. I managed to slug down one bottle in about five minutes. 
25 minutes, managed to drink the second bottle by now, already feeling slightly dissociated. Nausea is coming on strong. This stuff is absolutely disgusting. 40 minutes. I'm being drowned in a big swirling ocean of syrup. The swells toss me about and mould my form like I'm made of soft clay. I do not feel a progression through plateaus, rather I'm just sinking deeper and deeper into the deck sea. It reaches a point where I can no longer see straight with both eyes open. I get the classic dissociative double vision. I'm on the MXC while I write this, oops. It follows with this sense of just being completely and totally lost in my own room. I do not know where I am, when I am, why I am, how I am, and I'm wiped clean and left confused. It feels like my stomach is boiling. I know I have to hold it down as long as possible to absorb as much as I can. I know vomiting is near inevitable though. At 45 minutes, the yak comes. I throw up red syrup in a hideous cascade. Wow, this feels terrible. I never liked vomiting. It's painful, it's uncomfortable, it makes my eyes water and it makes me feel like my body is dismantling. But I get it out. And I feel a bit disappointed that I wasn't able to keep it down for longer. I will not get the full experience I desired, I'm pretty sure. T plus unknown hours. Per usual, the next however many hours is a dissociative blackout fog. Timeless and punctuated by brief moments of relative clarity. What I can remember is open-eyed visuals taking the form of warping and bulging of the space around me. It looked like the world had turned to syrup and was tilting in every direction slowly. I lost all sense of space. If I closed my eyes and opened them again, I would feel completely lost with no idea of what was up, down, left, right, forward, backwards, and I felt like I was the objects around me, not an independent being. Walking was pretty much impossible as well. If I close my eyes, it would be an instant out-of-body experience. No calm and gradual fading of myself. I was immediately cast into the dizzying void. Each time my eyes closed, a similar journey would take place with the same sequence. First I would see the room around me. It looked normal with the colours being heavily saturated. But soon after though, the dream space would collapse into the swirling abyss, coming apart piece by piece, dissolving into nothing. I would then be in a vast place that I would call the Dream Nexus. It seemed like an impossible huge spherical void which I was free to float in. The walls of this shell were covered with a grid of hundreds of thousands of apertures, and this is where things get a bit confusing. If I were to float in an aperture, I would awake in my bed again. I would get up and explore my house and encounter people I knew, either people I lived with, friends, or sometimes strangers. We would interact, and everything seemed very off. We spoke in terse, non sequiturs. I don't remember any of what was said, but it was all surreal and emotionally empty. Everyone was emotionally empty, and the colour was drained of the world. This whole time, I was actually still just lying in bed with my eyes closed. I could reset the cycle by opening and closing my eyes. With eyes open, a similar effect took hold as if my brain was trying its hardest to imbue this feeling in me no matter my state. Objects around me would morph into people, familiar people. They would just stand there, merely existing, looking like furniture. They kept appearing around me, hanging around me, and I didn't feel alone in my room at all. And in retrospect, I ended up having to ask my roommates if I really interacted with any of them during that time span, to which I did not. T plus five hours. I wake up. I don't know if I fell asleep or if the past three hours have been a total blackout. I'm down enough to have functional motor skills and it seems like my memory has touched down and is recording again. I still feel very dissociated and spacey. I still have the dex walk and still feel like everything is in motion. I have a sense of direction again and the visual effects have died down other than vision being super blurry. I hang out with my roommates and go scavenging for junk with them the rest of the night. T plus 9 hours. I go to bed, still feeling spacey. I wake up the next morning, still feeling like I'm on a low dose of dex. Still feel the dex walk, but it's not apparent and I look normal enough. The world feels dreamlike and unreal. It seems like everything is just fading into the background of existence. I have an appointment with my therapist and he's a bit irked that I'm altered while there. I still have vivid, closed eye visuals. And if I close my eyes long enough, I can really sink into them and almost sort of lucid dream. They are no longer replicated from the world around me, 
but rather are randomly generated. They take the form of tunnels and moving geometric objects. Looking out from my corpse, a DXM trip report by SMP, posted to Earwid.org January 13th, 2002. <sighs> DXM is an experience I will never forget. I've done acid and other drugs before, but I've never been through something so intense in my entire life. Me and two of her friends, Jen and Candice, decided we wanted to go to the movies and trip. Well, LSD wasn't available at the time that day for us to obtain, so we decided we were going to do a robo trip instead. We walked down to a local drugstore and bought three bottles of Robitussin Max, strength cough syrup, one bottle per person, making sure the active ingredient was DXM. I'd done a robo trip once before, but I was only able to consume half a bottle, if even that, and then quit drinking it due to the horrible taste. And I can honestly say that nothing actually happened during that trip. Candice had done robo trips before, so she was the most experienced between the three of us, and Jen had never tripped on anything. We get to the movies early so that we are the first ones in the theatre, and we can drink our cough syrup alone. Getting this stuff down was not easy at all. It was horrible, but we all managed to get a whole bottle down our throats. From what I've read from other experiences, it takes about an hour to hit you. Well, not hours. We drank the bottle about 2.30pm, and it hit us about 10 minutes later. It came on us feeling really drunk, and our bodies started getting numb. Me and Candice thought it was the coolest thing in the world, but Jen was just feeling really sick. When we got up and walked around, it felt like we were heavily intoxicated. And when we went back to our seats in the theatre, I started seeing little visuals like trails and colour distortion. But that's about it. And when I had to step down a step, it looked like it was a five foot leap. Of course, I laugh at everything, so when I step off this step, I fall flat on my face laughing. And during this point, I'm thinking, well, this is the coolest thing in the world. Although, I was very, very wrong. Jen started feeling really sick, and asked us to walk her to the bathroom. We get to the bathroom, and she tries to throw up the cough syrup, to get out of her system. Nothing comes up, so we leave, and as we walk back in the door of the movie, she collapses again, against the wall, and starts vomiting. After she's done getting rid of the cough syrup from her stomach onto the wall, we leave the movie and sit in the hallway of the theatre on a bench. Jen said she felt a lot better after that, and Candice was having a blast with her numb body. And, well, as for me, I started to feel really tired and sick. What I list next is all I remember and what my friends told me. I remember sitting on the bench inside the theatre and passing out, waking up in the corner of the theatre in my friend's lap and them laughing at me and asking if I'm feeling anything. I remember blacking out several times, and what seemed like 50 years was only about one minute. My body went completely numb. And I could hear myself asking questions like, What time is it? Am I dead yet? I couldn't actually feel my mouth moving, and right after I would ask these, I would blank out, so I never remember asking it, and I would ask those questions repeatedly every two minutes. Eventually, I woke up and puked in the movie theatre and passed out again, and my friends said they started getting really scared when I kept asking, Am I dead yet? Am I gonna die? Please don't let me die. You can't die on this stuff, right? Because I'm pretty scared right now, not gonna lie. And people who worked at the theatre started getting suspicious, so we had to leave. But I don't remember them or my friends saying we had to leave. But I do remember passing out again, and Candice and Jen trying to pick me up and carry my lifeless body outside the theatre. Candice later told me after the trip, when she tried to pick me up, she couldn't feel my muscles at all, and it felt exactly like pulling on a dead body. So, when we got outside, I guess they put me on a bench outside, and I passed out. And when I awoke, Jen or Candice were near me, and I was screaming their name. Eventually, they ran over to me, and I told them to stay with me the rest of the time until we left. Candice got really scared, because I was saying some, well, some scary shit, talking about death. She called her parents and told them what we'd done, and to come pick us up. Now, here's where shit gets really bad, and I will never forget this. I remember lying on the bench and couldn't feel anything. I was just lying there with my eyes open. I couldn't feel myself breathing, blinking, talking, etc. And I kept saying, am I dead yet, over and over. But I couldn't feel my mouth moving. I felt like my soul was trapped inside my dead body. And I was looking out and I saw these paramedics coming towards me. It was my parents and a crowd of people around me. And I heard the paramedics say, she isn't going to make it. 
and then rushed me to the hospital and I saw myself in a stretcher, hooked up to all these tubes and the doctor saying, we're sorry, but your daughter is dead. And then I saw my funeral. It was so real and so scary, but of course all of this was a very intense dream and I didn't want to die of stupidity from a drug overdose and especially from drinking something as stupid as cough syrup. So I saw my family and friends all around my grave and me in a coffin. Then I come back to being a soul in a dead body at the movies, looking out at the world as I lie here dead. Then the most unbelievable thing that has ever happened to me happened. And whoever reads this is going to think I'm on crack, but I swear a light shone down on me, and I swear it was God. And I must say I never believed in God until that happened. And my lifeless body came back to life, coming back into reality. By that time, Candace's dad finally got there after I'd already died. I'd been to the hospital and had a funeral. But he managed to get there and I fell asleep in the car, waking up in their driveway puking and her parents screaming at us. And by now, I'm just really drunk. And I've come way down off my trip. At 7.30 is when I was able to talk. I was somewhat normal by then, but all in all, it ended up being normal at about 9pm. In conclusion, it was scary as hell and I didn't really go into too much detail about how bad the blackouts were. There really are no words that can describe just how bad it was, and hopefully no one will ever experience a trip like I'd gone through. I honestly thought I was either going to die, or be permanently screwed up for the rest of my life, and my friends thought the same thing. The next morning though, I must say, I felt excellent. Jen felt hungover, and Candice felt like complete ass. Personally, I will never do this ever again. I can't say I regret it, and I think it was an experience well learned, and it was way too intense for comfort. Certainly, doing it in a public place like a movie theatre was the biggest mistake. Different Worlds A DXM trip report by Rich, hosted at Irwid.org, July 15th, 2005. It was about 9pm on a summer night. I had no place to sleep, so I decided to call up a friend so I could crash at his house. When I got over to my friend Chris's house, we were bored as hell, so we decided to go to the closest grocery store and steal us some Robitussin. So we took scooters over there, stole a bottle of the Robitussin maximum strength coffee each, and bought a soda for a chaser. On the way home, we both downed our Tussin. By the time we had gotten home, we were fully tripping. Chris wasn't as used to it as I was, so he was pretty out of it, but I, however, was not. I just felt mildly drunk and a little speedy. So after about an hour or so of boredom, I suggested we make another trip to the store. This time we walked there, so we could enjoy tripping on the way there. Anyway, we both stole another bottle of RMSC and drank it on the way home. Well, by the time we got into the basement of his house, I could hardly walk at all. We both had trouble standing up, let alone walking down the stairs to his room in the basement. Now, this basement was no ordinary basement. It was more like a dungeon, or so I thought it was. There were pipes leading to his furnace that had flames shooting out of it all times. The floor was dirt and the atmosphere was muggy. Not a nice place to be tripping in. Anyways, we had turned off the lights and went to bed, but I couldn't sleep. I was haunted by the general atmosphere of the room. I felt like I wasn't in a familiar place, but I was too scared to say anything. So I looked to my left and suddenly I'm not where I thought I was. And I could no longer remember where I used to think I was at all. So therefore... I was in a strange place trying to think of where I used to think I was. This led to an acceptance of my surroundings due to the lack of any previous knowledge of where I am. Suddenly I realised that I'd been hearing voices for hours. People looking for me, calling my name. Rich, where are you? I felt the presence of three people far below me, which were of course the people calling my name. I thought to myself that I must be hiding from them. So I decided to remain in my current position and survey the situation before calling out to them. I looked down and saw three people wearing hard hats and operating heavy machinery and such. So I came up with the conclusion that I was part of some sort of construction crew and I was just being lazy and not working. I thought to myself that I'd better say something before they leave without me. So I stood up from my bed and yelled out, Well, here I am. I'm ready to work now. Just then, Chris gets out of bed and turns on the light and says, What the hell are you doing? Then I realised I was going to have a really odd night with this drug in the dark, moist basement. I laid back down to try and sleep again, and just as I was falling asleep, it started over again. 
Only, this time, I was in a different place with absolutely no previous knowledge of how I had even gotten there. This new place was very distinct. I was in a spaceship with millions of other human carrying pods. There was no gravity, therefore I was strapped to the bed. As I screamed and tried to break free, Chris turned on the light. This same thing went on all night long until the morning, and I really didn't get any sleep at all. I went to various different locations, none of them being pleasant. I was in jail, the bottom of the ocean, even a concentration camp. It's trips like these that really make me think about what kind of a person I really am to dream up such crazy, crazy things.